so um <clears throat> so what what are you expecting from it you know what are you trying to get out of it um first of all i just want to make it to rio to brazil <laughs> in good health and spirits and yeah i think it's um it's a sportive event but also a spiritual journey where you can really experience nature and also as you said myself so i'm bringing some prayers and notebooks and i'm really open for what's going to happen so are those other people also any spiritual orientation or do you have no idea where they're coming from um i will find it out when we do sort of introduction um that there might as well be i mean one girl in the crew is vegan so that means she's like animal kind um and the other people have a really free mindset so they're um sort of perpetual travelers that don't like to oblige to any state or pay tax uh, they're like experts in the topic <laughs> so they have a very open mindset yeah Yeah so the thing is with experts travelers you know and I I nearly became a traveler myself you know I was checking it out as a life path you know as a career you know as such uh, yeah you know there were people they were going to Alaska you know um doing pipeline or something where you work really hard for half a year Mm-hmm. And then you could live one or two years in Thailand or wherever you wanted, Sri Lanka. You know, I met those people in Sri Lanka. I, I met them in Istanbul, where all the travelers meet. I think it was mm-hmm. at the Blue Mosque. So, mm-hmm. you know, and travelers, you know, they have they have seen so much. <laughs> you know, they're so different than, than the people where you, you know, where we come from, you know, that have maybe ventured out as tourists. You know, travelers are just very, very different people. You know, their yeah. the horizon is just so, so different. Yeah. So this is, a, yeah, this is other very choice people, generally. You know, mm-hmm. um, a nice, very nice group to be with. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, here, let's call on the goddess to be in front of you. Uh, here she is. Nice. Mm-hmm. And start running love with her. Good. Uh-huh. And who? Yeah. Now at the cheeks, you know, you have actually little love chakras in the cheeks. Let me just, you know, can you feel that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just uh, at besides the heart chakra, you know, uh, at the yeah, that tickles. <laughs> you know, at the cheeks there. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, let's just ask her to give you a clear yes, you know, when she thinks, you know, you're ready to communicate clearly. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's just work on obstacles. <laughs> It's the moving of obstacles, right? So first of all, you know, very simple question. Have you been a sailor, you know, or really done long journeys, you know, over water in past lifetimes, yes or no? Yes. Okay. So do you have maybe still soul fragments and ghosts of, you know, where those parallel or past lifetime existences drowned? (laughs) You know, do we still have some of those around? Yes or no? Yeah, there's one dark thing. Uh Sort of my right field. Yeah, all right. Let's ask this to be in front of you now. Amen. (laughs) And so first question is, is this part of your soul or is this part of somebody else's soul? It's like a squirrel. (laughs) Um. Let's see. This is part of Margarita's. This is from somebody else. This is from somebody else's seems. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I'm close to it. I can feel it really well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we put in the order. And so asked whether you know this was a loved one of yours. You know, that actually maybe he drowned and couldn't come back to you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So just sent him a lot of love, you know, and he finally, you know, you're meeting him again. And yeah, do you want to know that lifetime? Mm. Ask, ask your high self whether she wants you to see this lifetime right now. You know, maybe it's good for you, or maybe, it, you know, otherwise we can just clear it and send you both to heaven. Um, she says, I can see it, but I don't have to. We can also move on. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's just, you know, probably, you know, the, you were probably the woman here, you know, the sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And maybe there were also kids there, you know, if there's still ghosts looking for their dad, you know, we like to have them reunited and then brought into the heavens. You know, all the trauma clear, you know, especially from him and the drowning. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Yeah. And here, oh, here going fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have their baggage also cleared, you know, probably his pain and your pain, you know, from that separation, you know. You just don't know what happened, you know. And, and they get lost at sea, where they be taken to slavery, are they living, did they betray you, have another sweetheart somewhere, you know, you never know. So it was always very hard. Okay, yeah, the baggage is being cleared, thank you. <laughs> now ask your high self whether there's another, you know, um, lifetime, you know, maybe from your own soul, that has still a connection, you know, with trauma on the sea. Because we rather face the snow than out there on the ocean, right? <laughs> yeah, there's one more. Mm -hmm. One more. All right. So let's give this one an interview. Is this a man or a woman? Man. And is this part of your soul or somebody else's soul? No, it's me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling a young man. Okay. And so what was this? Was this like a fisherman or a Viking or a merchant marine? What kind of was what kind of person was that? Mm, just feels really um athletic. Mm. Toned. Mm. I think he was just working on the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was like the muscle, <laughs> you know, move this for there, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So actually, actually, there are, uh, he was probably, you know, they all had their job. They didn't, you know, they all had, I mean, he was athletic. Those guys, they were like trapeze artists. You know, they would go up ropes, you know, and they had to do this doing stomps. Those guys were ripped. So, and what happened to him? Uh, was it a storm or uh, pirates or what? How did he die? We should have asked it to my higher self. Him. You can ask your higher self. You can also ask that being, you know, this is up to you. I think he got sick. Oh, was it the plague, you know, the pest? <laughs> or just... I don't know what it was exactly, but like a fever. Fever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellow fever. They had that was, you know, they had bad water after some time. You know, that's why the British, you know, they had lemon juice, you know, so that would disinfect the water. They had vitamin C, but not everybody did that. So it was, yeah, it was. They didn't live that long necessarily. So he died. Mm -hmm. And um, ask how does he still affect your life? I'm just getting lemons, like. Yeah, you. Get want to. Lemon. <laughs> Limey, Limey, right? Eat lemons and <laughs> have sunscreen. <Yeah. laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, you know, are there loved ones that he left behind? No. All right. So, why is he still here? You know, did he get cursed? No, probably not. Let's just, you know, let her get him into the heavens here. It's, it's going to be a lot better they do. Yeah, he's leaving. Yeah. 
you love you, man. Mm. All right, cool. Uh -huh. So let's uh, we also his baggage. We like to have cleared whatever is left there. from the disease, I think. Mm -hmm. Clear, clear, clear. All right, while this is going on, let's uh, hook up with your female high self again. And um, ask whether there are any spells and curses on you, you know, that would maybe bring bad luck or whatever, you know, onto you on the sea there. You know, because, you know, it's dangerous territory. If you fall overboard or something like that, you know, lots of stuff can happen. Yeah, you know, so this could be very sea specific, but it could just be personal uh, bad luck forever. Kind of thing. Just, mm -hmm. just ask, this is something that she's concerned about. Um, she says, I should check out one thing sort of this like metal ball I'm feeling on my chest that's sort of like, like a cannonball that's pulling me backwards. I should check out that one thing. All right. Uh -huh. you feel that? This is like a you know the ball and chain that you see in cartoons, you know, <laughs> or no, actually you know this chain gang. Yeah, yeah, you know that's yeah, something it's like that. Kind of small, like a tennis ball, but it has an enormous weight, sort of like mm -hmm. it beats gravity. So this is kind of sounds like a spell, right? Or uh, like a spell curse implement? Is that correct? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ask, a device. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Ask her, you know, in which kind of culture was this implanted into you? Mm. Ancient. Mm. Ancient. You know, ancient. Was also, this Atlantis? It could be. It's quite developed technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what was the purpose, you know, putting that thing on you? Was um, it a It's sort of um, to follow one specific streamline or direction. Because Looks like you got chipped. <laughs> <laughs> Was this in a human form? I see myself as a human body, sort of like holding on to it and like flying with it, but. You're flying with a human body. Mm. Yeah, you are. This is. But it could be anything. It's just it like could, the light body or the outline as well. Yeah, it could be a yogi, you know, or it could be like a more demigod, you know, humanoid form, but, uh, you know, demigod. So, you know, very advanced, you know, can levitate, etc. Maybe spirit being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, so this is basically like a, a like a Stead Wolf wife chip, you know, and that was put into you to keep you in line. Um, did this being, you know, um, this is like a punishment or is this just a control mechanism? Mm, it's not a punishment. <clears throat> yeah, more like a control or like... Mm -hmm. did I don't you... know if it's helpful because... It's going backwards, not forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, so, <clears throat> did he make a deal, you know, in exchange, you know, for this or that, you know, I, I give you permission to do something? Was there something like this then? Mm, no, not a quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. Or it was it just snuck in onto him, <laughs> you know, without his permission? Mm. your picture turned off again oh sorry <laughs> no, that's just uh, automatic right? that's all right yeah um, um. Mm. 
So anyhow, if you like to have this removed, <laughs> this looks like it's not necessary anymore. And if yeah. there was any deal or contract then, you know, we ask the highest divine forces to please clear this and to liberate this aspect of you. So it can return to your soul or to where it came from. It's not stuck anymore. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And if there are any booby traps with this or hooks, you know, poisons, you know, please clear all those, you know, clear the barbs first before we pull out the hooks. Amen. Oh, yeah, there's... Uh, that was a big one here. Mm -hmm. That was a powerful part of you. Mm -hmm. It's still happening. You feel this in your heart? I do feel expansion or more light in the no. heart. I feel a huge light expansion. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> it's like I got more space to breathe as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I noticed your breathing was kind of inhibited that way. Oh, like, ask, ask your high self while you're still in the expansion, whether there were aspects of you that were drowned in past lifetime, drowned or suffocated, you know, anything um, that affects your breathing. Yes, I know. Yeah, I feel like I was in a, a dark, tiny place once with really bad oxygen. Uh -huh. But it looks more like a castle to me <laughs> than proper drown. <clears throat> yeah, was this a dungeon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's important, you know. I mean, it's just dungeon past life, I'm no fun. <laughs> yeah, no. So, why did you get put into the dungeon? <laughs> what happened? Um, stealing. <laughs> uh huh. And was it something important, or was it just a petty thief, or what? I'm pretty petty and desperate, I think. So there was a severe punishment. Did you die in that dungeon? No, it was like, I was there a long time, but I got out. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, but did he kind of get something like tuberculosis or something like a not so good lungs, like a rot or something? <laughs> yeah, hard to tell, but like the air wasn't really good. I feel like it was super moldy. Yeah, I mean, also no sunlight. I mean, just that lack of vitamin D, and you probably didn't get vitamins either, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I mean, this was stuff that would wear you down, damp, cold, no heating, be sure, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and uh, ask how this is one still affecting your life. Yeah, breathing, and also, this sounds funny now, but I'm getting encounters with mold. <laughs> Maybe pick that right, huh? Uh -huh. My God. Oh. <laughs> I hate mold. <laughs> there you go. Bleach is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need some of the good American stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Salso. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... <laughs> Let's have this poor one, and probably he got cursed too, maybe government spell, so we like to have him cleared and brought into the heavens, this poor, poor guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you know by now not to steal any. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, mean, I think he's leaving pretty fast. And then let's have his uh, baggage also cleared. Poverty, consciousness, and guilt, and shame, and hopelessness, you know. And, oh the disease, miasms, you know, those kind of things. Clear, 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 clear. Ooh. Feeling really good. Yeah, it's coming in. So, yeah, you're gonna do some deep breathing. <laughs> All right, now this is something you can do on the ocean. You probably have to be outside a lot. You know, when you face the sun, you just close your eyes. I mean, and inhale the sun into your third eye, into your heart, into your solar plexus. You know, just as if you're running love, but you know, into the chakras, you know. 
-hmm. And if you can get, you know, like a sun, like visualization in your chakras, like if you have the sun in the middle of your head, awesome. If you have it in your throat or in your heart, I mean, you become like super radiant, you know, it can be done and yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. And so, but feeding the pineal gland with the sunlight, that's the thing, you know, that's really like the booster, you know, for this is really what your pineal gland needs. Mm -hmm. And of and course, consciously, you have to really pull it in. Yeah. It doesn't do enough to just lie on the beach. No, no, pulling in mm -hmm. is when you lay on the beach, you know, you connect more with the sand there. You know, I mean, these are all little charged crystals, yeah. right? And you yeah. make friends with them and, you know, absorb their good stuff. You mm -hmm. know, and I mean, you know, and it, there is no, I mean, you know, you, you ground through all those little quartz crystals you know with your earth that's definitely a good thing and there are probably some of them come from far away the corns of the sand you know of the sand you know some of them that, that traveled from far away you know so i mean if depending on how, how psychic you become you know you can talk to them where you come from show me where you come from you know show me what you have seen impressive <laughs> things yeah i mean uh those things can happen. This is how hermits, you know, entertain themselves. They talk to the clouds and, I mean, I, I talk to a hermit, you know, Francisco, no, what was the Trappist monk, two years out in a hut in nature. No humans. <laughs> wow. He, he said, yeah, you talk to the nature spirits, you talk to everybody there, to the water. You know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you're not alone. <laughs> you know. yeah. All right, so, okay, so I think this guy is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. Now, uh, let's go to the more juicy stuff. Um, asked whether in Atlantean lifetimes, you know, you were kind of working, you know, maybe with marine life in some form, yes or no? Yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. But um, I also feel more like a spectator in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, studying probably. Mm -hmm. Also asked whether you were incarnated, you know, in uh, let's say water life forms like mermaids, mermen, uh, orcas, whales, and dolphins. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh -huh. um, and uh, asked whether you still have any spirit guides, you know, or familiars, you know, or friends from those lifetimes that would like to meet you. Yeah, I'm feeling really deep love right now. Uh -huh, you <laughs> yeah. I don't know who was whose pet, but uh, let's just call <laughs> him that, you know, the ones that loved you the most and that you loved the most. I mean, I don't know, they should start bickering, but somebody has to be first. <laughs> and see who's coming first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a humanoid being, but with a tail, <laughs> can't swim. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, kind of fringes, right? Like a fringy. Uh, mm -hmm. um, ask if it's like human size or is it like uh, larger than human? Human size. It's human size. Mm -hmm. And is this a friend of you or is this a parallel life of you or what is this thing? A really good companion. Were you lovers or scientists? No. What was your Richard. relationship? Um, Stay with him. <laughs> yeah. It's like swimming together, like really far and wide. I don't know for what purpose though. Yeah. Were you, were you explorers, adventurers? Yeah, but we took, didn't take it really seriously. We like had our fun along the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. I mean, you know, this this what we're having nowadays, this work thing, this is slave to me. Yeah. Working eight hours is slave, slave work. It's just not fun anymore, you know? Cool. Uh, so this is uh, Aquaman, you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and yeah, just run some love with him. You know, love. Yeah, run love with him. Maybe you've shown your form in that lifetime too. And there she is. Lovely, lovely heart. I can't see her form, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very aquatic, very cool. Maybe you want to see how they lived a little bit or how they interacted with the smart marine life, you know. Show them how they interact with dolphins and whales. And see what they do. Do they project chi, just love like we do, or uh, thought forms move from the third eye, or, you know, how do they resonate? Pictures? Um, I feel like they bonded together really closely, like swimming together, sort mm -hmm. of on the belly of a big whale, for example. Um, and then just connecting with the hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You connect with her heart, yeah. Yeah. Just like you do with your inner child, pretty much. Mm. I didn't get that. Yeah, I mean, you connect with the heart, you know, like you do with your inner child or with your high self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's call if you have like a favorite, you know, maybe there is still some whale there that was your friend. Oh, there's something there. Mm -hmm. And start running love with that presence. <clears throat> mm -hmm. See how we go. <laughs> yeah, those guys have capacity, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have this huge meat body, so they can generate some chi. Wow. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, throughout the whole trip, she was just sitting in front of the boats, grinning like an idiot, and everybody was high as a kite. We, there were no drugs on the boat. We don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sweating. It's getting warm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's like a huge battery, so whenever you get exhausted, probably, you know, you need some hoof die, just call on him. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So this is cool. So you met some friends, you know, kind of how to connect with them. Mm -hmm. Um, now ask your high self, you know, um, what does she see as the advantage, you know, uh, for traveling? There are probably many, many things coming together, right? So um, there would be a, the social scene, you know, being together with other people. You know? So how important, you know, let's say, you know, we, we're going to be also be talking about, you know, connecting with the ocean, you know, etc. You know, so. But uh, how much importance does she think, you know, has this human interaction? This may be, she like, oh, hey, this is the only reason here why we're doing this. You know, so uh, let's just see what she says. Yeah, she's um, showing me like sunsets, dancing, and like taking pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it feels like, a lot of fun, like I'm hearing music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's into that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is going to be one of your best times in your life. Huh? Something you will always cherish, right? This is the salad day, says say in Shakespeare. And yes, you know, the most yeah. beautiful, you know, young, be together with other beautiful, young, healthy people in nature. You know, they're all elevated, you know, beautiful mm -hmm. surroundings, you know. So yeah, you know, just have your high-speed camera, internal high-speed camera, you know, soak it up, remember it. Yeah. So you can get it out, you know, then you can say, done this, you know, it's your bucket mm -hmm. list, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I was lucky to experience paradise myself in Sri Lanka. You know, it's like, all right. You know, that's, uh, you know, so no more hankering for that then. Cool, yeah, so this is going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. Ask whether those people there on the, that boat you're going to meet, do you have past life relationships with them? Um, out of the eight, uh, maybe like five are blacked out and three appear. Okay, uh -huh. so five are back. <laughs> Just for <laughs> your background <laughs> people, <laughs> Matrix. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wear black pants, black <laughs> swimming trunks. <laughs> the other three, they get red swimming trunks. <laughs> <laughs> stick out like <laughs> like the red dress woman in the matrix <laughs> all right so let's see so those three guys oh i don't know whether these are guys i assume you know are they opposite gender or mixed or what what what's one guy one girl and another guy but less important or like know each other but nothing so yeah, do we have anything important, you know, with those people, you know, um, that should be cleared or be aware upon, you know, so we take advantage of the situation, you know, how to best steer this. I'm seeing them in their current form now, right? Like how they look in this life. Mm -hmm. And definitely the sort of organizer of the trip is coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the organizer. Mm -hmm. So, do you, uh, how many lifetime maybe have you kind of known this guy? I'm getting two. All right, and you know, uh, probably wasn't your husband or wife, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, but, was there, what was the relationship in those lifetimes? Um, could be, yeah, but I'm getting more like brother or sister stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, could have been also just a cook or, you know, like your officer, you know, the commanding officer. So, all right. So he was kind of, and what was the relationship? Was it nice, good, uh, or bad or what? It was good, but a little bit like siblings that bicker. <laughs> but um, yeah, oh, nothing right. so crazy, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I asked if there's still some stuff from that, you know, spells, curses, promises, <laughs> you know, vows, <laughs> you know, like I'm going to get back at you, <laughs> you know, or I'm going to show you, you know, all this negative stuff between you guys be clear, you know, and we call on this high self, and you ask, you know, your high self to just, you know, shake hands, do the high five, blast some love, yeah, here we go, I can feel this in my yeah. higher chakras, this is awesome, I'm gonna do this more. <laughs> no, also we like to have the boat blessed, you know, that any negative energy that's still there from old fights, you know, um, financial problems, jealousy, envy of other people, please be cleared. Any negative spirits too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we charged up with nice positive energy, you know, everything harmonized, so all the equipment works. We never like to have blessings on that. And now, oh, maybe there's one more thing. Mm -hmm. The wind being. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that's uh, going to be a big thing there, and you should be aware of that. Uh -huh. And asked whether in past lifetimes, you know, you were somebody that was interfacing with a wind, you know, with this kind of consciousness and beings, you know, as a mystic or maybe even as a sailor sometimes, you know, we uh, had this, you know, just like Native Americans could do rain dances, you know, other shamans and whatever, you know, they, they could interface with this consciousness. 
So I asked whether you have past life experience with this, yes or no. Um, I get a very bright, good feeling about it. Um, I am not the wind myself, but I'm yeah interfacing. It's almost like there's my yellow golden side, and then there's the wind side, and we're like balancing each other. Uh huh. Like a friendship, really. Yeah, a close knowing. Uh huh. Yeah. So. Um. So, for instance, you know, the way I interact, you know, with the wind, like, you know, for instance, I take it personal, you know, the way, like, uh, you know, the breeze comes over me. You know, if there's a nice breeze, you know, I, I think, oh, you know, he's caressing me. You know, he's keeping me nice and cool. You know, I, you know, and I thank, you know, and you can actually run love into that consciousness. You know, just take it from heaven and earth and just send it, you know, into the wind or whatever. You know, and ask, you know, see, maybe start doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, connect with this being, yeah, yeah. So you know, see yourself on a catamaran and the wind comes on one side and you face it and, one, you know, have a loving exchange with this, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can, first you may feel it on your skin and then, you know, it can blow over and through you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Now ask also while you're running love with the wind, ask the whale to overlay his love onto you. So you get a little bit more hoofed, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not criticizing you. I mean, we're just playing around here, you know, I'm just showing you some tricks here, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so powerful the whale. Uh, Thank the whale, you know, and you will probably hang out more with him or her. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cool. So just, uh, you know, also now with the water. Oh, la, la, la. Yes, of course. So now, uh, you know, so you're in the boat and you kind of, it's like grounding, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. to just connect with the ocean, you know, with this being, this consciousness, a huge consciousness. Just run love with that. It's probably to the, you know, root chakra, heart chakra, all the way. And it goes into the horizons, I would say, yeah, all the way, 360. But mm -hmm. become comfortable with that. You're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Or we have to open your root more. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're merging more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give up the boundaries that you feel in the lower part of your bodies. You know, it's as if you dissolve the physical image. Yeah, you become more like molten wax on a hot plate. You know, it's just, you, you're still part of the candle, but the rest is like all over the frying pan. <laughs> it's like all through the water. Mm -hmm. Ah, now the positive stuff comes in. Mm -hmm. And we release all the negative fear around water, right? I mean, many times kids were programmed to be afraid of the water, and you know, and we were afraid <laughs> and nearly drowned probably many times. So there is definitely fear also in the DNA. So there is respect, and then there's unnecessary fear. So we like to clear all the baggage of unnecessary fear of water. Amen. Yeah, for me too, man. Mm -hmm. And now again, connect again through the 
<laughs> yeah, it's better. Mm-hmm. There's more of the legs even involved here. Oh, I'm feeling like a wave now. Mm. Yeah, so you're opening up more to the love. You know, there is still not really a strong love connection there. It's it's coming in though. Yeah, ask that whatever. Oh, I think there's anger. Yeah, you're angry at the water, and you know, I I was wondering why the liver kicked in. Okay. And and this is probably uh, did the ocean, you know, take loved ones away from you? You know, like probably mm-hmm. did. You know, uh, many lifetimes fishermen, <laughs> you know, and other, you know, didn't make it. Mm-hmm. So and I you were. Of- it's because the ocean is so strong, and sometimes storms the land. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think yeah, yeah. That's a, like yeah. these big waves. Like, yeah, I feel a lot of resentment that the ocean would do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, everybody lost. You know, fishermen. You know, they all lost loved ones on the, to the sea. You know, I mean, they didn't have uh, proper weather. They didn't have proper navigation. You know, or they were just smashed onto the rifts. You know, I mean, onto the cliffs. I, <laughs> you know, and so. Uh, uh, lots of stuff happened, you know, and of course we cursed and blamed the water. And of course we were somewhere <laughs> we're not supposed to be, <laughs> let's put it like mm-hmm. that, you know. So why don't we, you know, and me too, you know, I apologize to every time, you know, I cursed the ocean and the waters, mm-hmm. the lakes. And I apologize for this, you know, that's what an assumption here for me, from us. and. You know, we ask for forgiveness and, you know, we release all those spells and curses and anger we projected onto, you know, the water. Amen, 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 amen. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, yeah, there's a big man. Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh, yeah. Now. Yeah, now I feel more held and loved by the ocean than before. Yeah, yeah. it's just starting. <laughs> just, let's get into it a little bit more. Just draw that. Just draw the love from the ocean just into your heart, and you know you can flush it back. You know, just flush it back a little. Mm. You know, it's the ocean is our big mother. You know, that's where all the life came from. And we human, just in the human form, we rejected that because, you know, it killed some of our friends, or us too, mm-hmm. you know, so. It's our big mother, yeah, thank you. So, so, so sorry for that separation. <laughs> you will be very safe, I think. When, when the ocean loves you, when you're open to that love. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's go a little further here um, mm-hmm. for this special occasion. And uh, let's um, call on your female, also your male high self now, and also your inner teen. Mm-hmm. Okay, the inner teen probably needs a one, two, three. Just give her a good one, two, three. But she's going to have some fun there, I think. Is she going to look, is she looking forward to it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, let's ask myself, you know, um, let's start with the lady, you know, female myself check with her, you know, so you're having this kind of ideas about, you know, media presence. And so uh, ask, you know, how does she develop, wants to develop this and, you know, and of course this is kind of a stepping stone, you know, for this, maybe, you know, the breakthrough or whatever, you know, you have something unique, you know. Um, So you know, asked, you know, um, how would she like, you know, to kind of do this thing, you know, if she had her way, let's run, have her run you some commercials. Let me know what you get.
I'm getting like feeling really comfortable in my own skin. Just she's telling me like just be yourself, but also um, get those good pictures. Like really put some effort in with the lighting and um, like right facial expression. Like really capture the beauty. Mm -hmm. And work for it, you know, like not just take two pics with a phone quickly, but really try angles and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you have any training in photography? Um, I mean, I took a one, two hour class once. <laughs> and there okay. was all <laughs> self-taught. Mm -hmm. So do you have, a, a, do you use a smartphone or do you have actually a camera? As such? Um, I have a smartphone, but they have a camera on board. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I have one other. No, I'm a, I mean, I'm a highly trained photographer, you know, I'm wondering if I should give you some tips or that and what, what would I do and teach you and show you right so ask whether you should take a, a video too first of all besides having good shots oh definitely yeah she already included that showing me like lots of footage mm -hmm. also sound that you just like slowly moving in the scenery but it can be used later just build mm -hmm. up footage yeah so make sure you know I'll, now i know my tips here all right so with effort, you know, you might have to put stuff on tripod. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say if you have a sunset, you know, or certain scenes, I would shoot this on a tripod. You know, from a stable surface, you know, because it can be very distracting. You know, so this is the problem you're talking, you know, so I try to do as little hand at it as possible. If you have a tripod, you basically also have something like a... Um, what are they called now? Um, you know, uh, something, a stabilizer, you know? So many times you see those movie shots and there's like really floaty. So if you have a, you know, if you have a whole tripod, like, you know, probably not too heavy at the bottom, you know, if you get those just very floaty movement shots, you know, moving your hands, if you do a panorama or you move following somebody, it's very dynamic, right? And mm -hmm. it's very stable. It's a, like an image stabilizer. I mean, you, of course, you can buy things for a couple hundred bucks, but it's mm -hmm. really not necessary. It's just the weight at the bottom, <laughs> you know, that keeps it stable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing is nobody's working for shots. All right. So um, I used to do this a lot. You know, not only shooting weddings, but also gurus and, you know, all kinds of propaganda shots. Right. So what you do is, so you first of all, you know, you always look around and you see if there's anything cool happening. You mm -hmm. know, so if you see there is something really nice happening, you know, then you're in your mind or physically, you know, you walk around and you make sure you have a really good background. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a shitty background, you know, and it's like the mast is coming out of somebody's head, you know, you cannot, you cannot use the shot. So you want to have a really nice background, you know, and you kind of compose your shot, foreground, middle ground, background, you know. And then, um, you know, if you have facial expression involved or process involved, you know, I mean, you can take a safety shot so you got the scene, you know, in case somebody walks away. But then you wait with a finger on the trigger till everybody laughs or till, you know, you have the best facial expressions. Now that is kind of a tricky thing. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you become like a hunter or like a sniper, you know, in a way. I mean, it's, it's fun, you know, but this is the high end of, of photography, all right? So, of course, with, uh, with, the, uh, with those camera, with those smartphone cameras, there is a little delay Mm -hmm. I think between the trigger and this, but okay. So, but let's say when you look at a, a laughter, right? A laughter comes on, then it peaks mm -hmm. and then it, you know, goes away. You know, mm -hmm. there is a progression, you know, so you can see, uh, they just told a joke, you know, or they're going to laugh, you know, and, and then you probably, because you're not, it's not like them, you know, I, I used to peak it. You know, and yeah. you get it on the on the on the peak shot. You know, with you, you have to probably trigger a little bit before it, 
but that's what you're looking for you know so you might just stay on that same group for 10 minutes and get like crank 10 shots out of that because of yeah. different facial expression and then when you pick one or then maybe one you know you got a really good shot you know because yeah. electronic storage is damn cheap you know you you know i mean this is like so cheap you know, I mean, I used to, I, I still come from poverty consciousness. Yeah, the film was so expensive, you know, to store it all. And I was a student and this and that, you know. So, but now it is electronic. <laughs> you know, you, can, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just, you know, so everything, you know, you work, you know, and maybe from one scene, you know, you take three different angles. You know, and close-ups, and and you know, you can zoom maybe, you know, and and also okay, cool. So that's for that, and of course, ask that you be inspired. You know, I mean, inspiration is that you be guided and inspired. Now, also ask whether you should do interviews with people. You know, just uh, so ask your ask ask your female high self. So when you do those interviews, what should be the focus of that? You know, I mean, you can. You know, what is your favorite toothpaste or your favorite fashion or you know what should you those questions be centered around so i'm getting really some reflections on the past but also that the the, the year to come now 2021 and everything mm -hmm. is going to be so different going forward mm -hmm. so sort of don't linger in the past too much but also talk a lot about like visions and hopes and the bright stuff but it's a comparison really oh yeah 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 the comparison see you are like a designer of the new world right into crypto and you know uh, socioeconomic structures things like that so yeah so yeah so you know you could you know so i mean because you're out of the culture in certain ways you know? mm -hmm. you're not in the Vegas hustle bustle or whatever, you know, so you're out in nature uh, in a retreat. So, you know, uh, what is, you know, the, the, the culture that, what uh, do you like to let go of that culture that we live in? And what is the new culture that you would love to live in? Ask whether this is kind of the, the, the slant or whether she has variations to that slant. Yeah, it's, um, it's what you said, like society world at large, but also I should capture it through personal stories, you know, like people's own lives um, mm -hmm. and insights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good idea. I have yeah. a really good feeling yes. about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, make sure, you know, you have a mic, a good mic. A light. Oh. That's gonna be tough, I think. Let's see what we get on the boat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure what kind of phone you got, um, but do you have a mic in for the phone? If you have an iPhone, many times they don't have this anymore, you know, so, um, of course you can't get stuff on Amazon. See, I have a level your clip on mic. So when you're out in the wind, you know, uh, you might get a lot of noise, wind noise. Yeah. Maybe we gotta do a voiceover, worst case, or something after. Well, uh, you know, so if it's quiet outside, we can make interviews with a nice background. Mm -hmm. But if there's wind, you know, you might have to uh, monitor with headphones, have earbuds, you know. And um, even, uh, well, I mean, you know, on my earbuds, I have a microphone. All right, so you could use this. I mean, you know, you don't have to wear the earbuds, but you just clip it somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. Um, if you have to do it outside, you know, put the uh, microphone under under the shirt, under the clothes, if you can. Mm -hmm. Hide it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hide it because of the wind. It needs a wind protector. Normally you have a, it's called a sock, you know, something that has fur on it, you know, so to break it. But still, with, with, with strong wind, there's nothing they can do. You know, so then do those interviews inside. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. there might be some cool background, some cool spot, you know, or even showing what's going on, you know, and so you can do those inside. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a lot of work <laughs> already. I hope hey. I can do it. 
thing we it, said. It is work. I mean, it's like, I mean, what are you going to do there for 18 hours a day? You know? <laughs> so it's not really work. It's just being aware. Yes. You know, being aware, and then you know, if there's something cool, you know, you work the scene. You, you know, you whore it out. You know, you have, you know, go for the different varieties of background. So you kind of go around the theme. You know, so you can see the background changing, mm -hmm. and the light changing, and you know, and do you kind of learn? You know, you kind of you start here, and then sometimes you're not sure. For instance, you know, and you you just move your angle. You just go better, 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 worse. And then better, mm -hmm. better, better, worse, you know. And there is a there's a thing where you kind of I mean it's a feeling, you know. They're like ah, mm -hmm. fame. <laughs> you know, you get in a feeling for that, you know, of what is the actually better angle. You know, you mm -hmm. just you don't even try to rationalize. You know, you just feel how it shifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of grows in, yeah. Wonderful. Do we have a, a moment to look at Brazil? Um, Just a moment. <laughs> connect with your female high self. And let's ask whether you had past lifetimes in Brazil, yes or no? Yes. And I love How many? One big one or important one. One very big important one. Mm. Okay, so were you a man or woman there? Mm. I was a man, but I was um, heavy on my feminine side as well because I was really appreciative of the beauty. I don't know if all men are like that, but that's what I'm getting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what were you? You were just a, a villager or, you know, like a Native American, you know, living in the jungle by the river, or uh, what kind of a person were you? Maybe you were uh, Spanish, you know, or what kind of person were you? In the light of a kind of race. Yeah, um, I was wearing like dressed clothes, moving around a lot, but also tons of nature. Uh -huh. um, so, were you European or were you uh, local? It's really hard to tell. Certainly, I had a more tan skin color, but. Mm -hmm. Um, you mean if I just arrived there and then chose to live there, or if I was from there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we're just trying to figure out, you know, what kind of life yeah. was that. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there were Indios in the jungles, you know, there were the, the Spanish came over, or the Portuguese, basically, you know, and then they mixed, and they had lots of slaves, you know, and so it's a very unique culture there, you know, very, very yeah. unique culture. Uh, the, Brazilians are considered one of the yeah. happiest people in the world. You know? Yeah, it is. But I just know not enough about the culture and I'm seeing now. But I get the feeling that I was born and raised, but probably some like immigrant um, mm -hmm. European roots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And what was your job there? You know? Um, something close to trade again, but also going around and looking over the estate. Uh -huh. Probably growing something of a nature good. Uh, Plantation, yeah, you were all exploring things, you and you also enjoyed nature, and yeah. I think you were considered a blessing, you know, in, uh, to... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, I feel good about this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did this one die? Happily. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Old? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So, oh yeah, I feel that he said he went to the heavens. Ask that he shows you how he went through the dying process. 
this might be really cool for me. You know, so he's going, you know, he's, yeah, just go to before and then just follow him how he's leaving his body and stuff. Um, yeah, he did it like, okay, so that's it. I'm going to walk out and just like happily left, you know, like stepped out of his body and just started climbing, always following the light. Uh, it was quite a mystic, huh? Well, I can't believe how happy he was. It's so nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, his love is with you right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now ask him and your high self, you know, what are the suggestions you do there in Brazil? I don't know where you're going, in Rio or where, or smaller. Mm, they're saying just enjoy it really enjoy as much as you can and soak in the the land, the earth, the plants, the sun. And connect with the earth, yeah. So will this trigger something for you, you know, being in this land, will this change you in certain ways? Yeah, I think it's showing me a happiness, like a new kind. <laughs> yeah, I tell yeah. you, you know, yeah, Brazil is they're the happiest people. <laughs> All right. See you then. Yes. Uh, namaste. Uh, oh, yeah. Anything namaste. else? Thank you so much. No, we'll be in touch. Mm -hmm. I have lots to share then. Yeah. <laughs>